What's up YouTube? Ian Sandusky back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to be going through some very basic wire EDM stuff. Um, I realize I've made some videos on things that I have wire EDM in the past. I realize I haven't really done a very basic instructional video on using Masterchem 2018 to program wire EDM. Um, it's something that a lot of you guys may not have, but it's good knowledge to have if you're ever in a shop and you need to do some basic wire EDM stuff. Um, it's a fairly easy program to learn when it comes to um, understanding the fundamentals of it. If you understand CNC machining at all, this is gonna be probably pretty basic for you. Uh, there's just some little settings and stuff that uh, you need to keep track of that way. Before we do that, a um, couple quick little housekeeping things. One, I'm launching my new website probably next week that's gonna give you a chance to, I know some of you guys have emailed me about buying some of these things that I've shown that I've made. It's just gonna be an e-retail um, site that way. You know, there's no pressure, you guys don't need to go there by any means, but if you want to check out some of that stuff, I'm going to be posting a link for that shortly. Secondly, uh, t-shirts are coming soon for my other company, well, for my actual company, Lakewood Machine and Tool. Um, some of you guys have inquired about buying some of the t-shirts with my logo on it that you've seen before. Again, it's going to be an easy way to get those. And thirdly, uh, I just passed 1,200 subscribers here on YouTube. Just wanted to thank you guys for, for watching. Um, when I started this, I definitely didn't think this was going to be something that so many people were interested in. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic and I've loved interacting with you guys so far, so uh, let's hope it keeps going. So what we're going to do first, let's go upstairs, let's take a look at Mastercam and let's program this up. Today we're going to be doing some uh, bronze stitches, kind of like the ones I did in a previous video, except these ones are ones that I use personally and are going to be available for retail as opposed to doing them for a job, okay? Let's go take a look at that. This is the shape of the stitch we are going to do. So first of all, we're in Mastercam 2018. Um, if it doesn't look like this, you probably don't have 2018 or you're on X9 still. Wire pass. So the machine we're going into is wire. I already have the post set up for my Sodic AQ325 LN1W. LN1W, that's the controller. AQ325, that's the machine itself. Uh, just something so you know it. So when we do things in wire, everything for the most part can be thought of as 2D. Um, 3D doesn't come into effect unless we're doing tapers or angled cuts. So what I want to do is I go into my wire pass, and first of all, before I can do my contour, I need to make a thread point. So all I'm going to do, this can be pretty much anywhere, when you go to points, you see point, thread point, cut point. Thread point is where the wire is going to be threaded. So for me, it doesn't really matter. This is my material here. All of this is going to be an open area. Um, you know, if I was doing something where I had a hole and I needed to make sure that the thread point was in the center of the hole, I could do it that way, you know, by finding the center here and putting it in there. But it doesn't matter in this case, so I'm just going to put it somewhere out here. That little symbol is thread point, so I'm happy with that. So now, when I go to chain my wire pass, I want to make it thread here and then cut into here. One thing that you need to do, uh, if you want your cut to start at the edge of a circle, like I do here, you need to break that circle at the point of your wire path uh, or of your thread point. Otherwise, it may try to start over here. It may try to start over here. This is just the easiest way to do it that I've found. So I'm going to select my contour. First thing I'm going to select is my thread point. Next, I'm going to select my contour chain. There we go. So it automatically selects my entire chain. We hit OK. And we're happy with it. So when you go to the top here, there's only one kind of wire path type for this. It's the contour. Wire power, for my machine, I want it to be in regular old cut, which happens to be condition 001. Feed rate will be done automatically. Uh, my wire diameter is only 10 thou, as opposed to 12. And I do have an overburn of one thou per side. Um, one thing I have not quite figured out with this master cam yet is whether this is supposed to be overburn on both sides or one side. I put it to one thou and it works. Um, typically in the old master cams, this would be two thou because there's 1,000 per side. But we're going to put it on 1,000. Um, stock to leave, zero. And I'm going to put it to my machine offset register. MISC values, don't need to touch anything here, as well as registers. My cut parameters, so I want it to form a rough cut. If I turn this off, this is not going to cut at all. So no matter what, for this operation, I need to do a rough cut. Skim cuts, this is if you want it to cut and then go back and skim it. I don't need any of that for this. These are you know not rough parts, but they're not... Uh, precision die part, so I'm going to leave that at zero. A tab, if you put this in here, it's going to leave a tab 
after it cuts around so the part doesn't drop out in wire. After you cut around it, it's going to drop out, it can get jammed up, etc. I want it to cut and then stop about 30 thou from the end there so it'll have a tab. So when I can walk up, I can hit it, it'll cut that, you know, within less than a minute, I can take the part out and replace it. Uh, it's to keep it from getting jammed up really. So I'm going to click tab on. My tab width, I like to leave tabs for this about 30 thou. Oops. Yeah, obviously, if it's a big heavy die part, you know, you might want 150 thou. But uh, for this case, I want 30 thou. One tab cut. So right now, if I put it this way, it would rough and then it would cut and then it would go to the tab cut again and cut. I want to make it move with the skim cut. So in this case, it's going to cut and it's just going to stop right before the end and cut it. If I turn this off, the reason you would have this off is that if I had multiple parts, so it would go, instead of doing one roughing and then stopping before the end and then waiting to go on to the next part, it would go rough all the parts and then I can go back and tab cut them all at once. Since I'm doing just one part, I don't need that. So I'm going to hit this here. Um, so now you can see rough with stop and tab cut as opposed to two separate operations. Um, you know, this is all fine. I don't need to touch anything here for what we're doing right now. For me, I like to have the compensation type in the computer. Um, I just find that works with my wire machine. I don't know if it's because my control isn't set up completely perfectly or it's getting old, whatever it may be. Computer always gets the best results for me here. Um, I'm gonna leave this on auto. Stops, so I want it to generate a, a stop for the first time in the operation because it's the only tab. Right now it doesn't matter if I do either one because there is only one tab. Um, I want it to be as a stop before the tab so that's all perfect. Subprograms don't need, filter don't need. Leads. Now, I only want it to lead out a certain uh, amount. I don't want it to cut into the, my actual part. I'm just gonna make my max lead out 10 thou. I know this is kind of silly. I don't know why when I have a tab up here and I wanna use a dropout method, you have to unclick this. I don't, this has never made sense to me. Um, this says yes, I'm using tab cuts with no dropout method. I guess we are using dropout method with tab cuts, I, I'm not too sure. So regardless, to make this work, I have to turn that off. Uh, if somebody knows why, feel free to tell me. I've never quite understood that. So my tabs and finish leads, max lead out, I wanna leave to 10 thou. I want it to overlap my cut, let's say 20 thou. So that way it cuts past where the uh, the tab is. So you know, if it's not perfectly on the end there, you know, there's not still a tiny little tab. I want it to cut beyond it by 20 thou. I'm mean, gonna max lead out, again, it's gonna be 10 thou. Lead distance, uh, I don't need to touch anything with this here. Start position, again, it's fine. Now one thing I want to do with these is I want these to be a press fit. So what these are is I drill two holes in a piece of wood, there's a crack here, and then I cut to the two holes with a saw, that's one eighth, uh, these are three quarter. And essentially I hammer this into the wood and it holds it together. Um, it's a really nice decorative thing. Now I could do it straight, but one thing that's nice to have a press fit, so I don't actually even have to glue it in, is if I taper it. So I have it start at three quarter and it actually tapers up, you know, let's say one or two degrees. So we can do that here. So I'm gonna make my taper this way, and this is all in the taper menu. So I'm gonna hit, I want taper down, I want my taper direction left. Now, your rapid height is the top head. Uh, sorry, the UV trim height is the top head. My XY height is the lower head. My material I'm using is 3 8 thick. Again, this is all an imperial, guys, so I'm sorry if you're metric. I want my taper to be, let's say, 2 degrees. So that's from the bottom to the top. Uh, everything is always in absolute in this case. My chain height is going to be at the bottom. So this is going to create a taper. I'm going to tell you, when I go see this, I'm probably going to have to go back here and change it because it never seems to, I never seem to be able to think about it the right way the first time, but we'll, let's, we'll take a look at it. Corners are fine. Uh, tapered thread, I've never used this, but apparently you can do tapered threads in the wire EDM. I'm not quite sure how, but uh, it sounds interesting anyway. My flushing, I want on. So now this is gonna chain. Now you can see I'm cutting on the right side of the line. Um, this is my good part as opposed to this, so this is correct. I hit yes. So we can see here what it's gonna do. Is it's gonna cut, oh, top. It's gonna cut out to this point here and you can see that it's bigger on the top than it is on the bottom. Um, it's actually not even gonna cut on my line at all. That's okay for what I'm doing here. Look, if I turn that taper off, I'm just gonna show you, just let's look at it without a taper at first. 
here. And this is nice and easy to see. So what we're doing, it's not cutting out my line because that is the wire diameter. Um, that's the wire diameter plus the overburn, right? So don't be alarmed. This shouldn't cut right on your line anyway. So you can see it's going to go in here. It's going to cut all the way around. And you can see I have my, my UV height set, so you can actually see that it's going to be 3 8 thick. Um, yeah, and everything's happy that way right there is my tab. So I'm going to go back in here and I turn on my taper. We're just going to make this all 0.375. You can change your rapid height so it will retract or wrap at a different height, but we don't really care for what we're doing here. So we're going to go top. So you can see now my outside is at the same spot. Uh, it's cutting along the same line as when it was in 2D cutting mode. And my inside here is actually tapered in. So that's not really what I want. I want it to go out. So what we're gonna do in here, go back, we're gonna change it to the opposite taper. So now we can see that it starts smaller and my top is actually bigger. What this means is when I cut my tabs, I'm only gonna be able to take my part out from bottom to top because it won't fit through this way because it's bigger on top than it is on the bottom. That's perfect. The only thing I'll need to make sure of is that my top face, when I put it in, is my show face because the bottom will not be seen. This thing is now a one directional part. When I hammer it in, it will be larger at the top than it is at the bottom. Um, I actually don't know off the top of my head what the, what the size of the top is compared to the bottom. You could figure it out what, you know, two, two degrees is over three eighths if you wanted to. For me, it doesn't matter. It's woodworking. You, uh, you hammer it in, it goes in. If we were doing something for a die where I needed clearance, that's the other kind of way you can do this. I would usually, you know, use a five th or five degree taper, or whatever for a, for a die. Or I'd do a flat with a with a. I would use probably one of one of these here, where it's flat for the die cutting section, and then you have the um, clearance for the die sl or the uh, slug to fall out. I would actually calculate this out, or I would use what's called a four axis path, where I actually chain an upper and a lower path. For this, this is kind of, I wouldn't say it's the cheesy way to get uh, angles in there, but it is a way to get angles in there when you're not terribly concerned with the actual dimensions or you know it, like you know it's supposed to be one degree or you know it's supposed to be um, two degrees or whatever it may be. This is just one way to do it. Um, for this application, it works. For a lot of applications, it'll work. Um, there are other ways to do things if you need to be precise in other ways. You know, it's, uh, it's all situational. So let's say, uh, let's leave this, uh, oh, I don't want that at five degrees. Let's make that two degrees again. So we know that's looking good. Let's rechain that. Beautiful. So if we go and we back plot this, you can see it goes in threads. There's my upper head, there's my lower head. Threads, you can see the thread is there. We're cutting. You can see the UV is moving. It's very slight, but this head is actually moving. The lower head doesn't move independently of the upper one. The upper one is where you have your UV where it can move separately, right? Your UV, so you have your XY, your UV is the head above moving on an angle. And we can see it's gonna cut around. It's gonna put a move stop there. And then we cut our wire. And Bob's your uncle, okay? So now we post this out, same way as anyway. Sure, now let's save this to the desktop just for fun. Bronze stitch. It's gonna spit out all my code here with our fantastic master cam code expert. And it's going to take approximately a year here, as it always does. So you can see here, um, if you're not familiar with wire codes, T91 is our thread code. T90 is our cut. So at the end, it is going to cut. Um, if for whatever reason I wanted to leave the wire threaded and not cut, I can just delete this. But I'm going to leave it in there. Um, also, you know, you know, if there's some codes in here that you may not be familiar with if you uh, are used to CNC milling or turning. But it's all very similar. Uh, you get very used to it very quickly. Okay, so let's go downstairs, let's fire this in the wire machine, and let's run it.
there you have it guys. That's some very basic wire EDM stuff, kind of a crash course. Um, if there's interest in this, I can definitely do some more advanced wire EDM stuff. I don't know how many of you guys use EDM. I know this is a very specialized machine that a lot of people don't have because it's very purpose built. Um, a lot of you guys, you know, you're not gonna have a desktop wire EDM in your house. You may have a desktop CNC. Um, I don't know how much value there is in that. But, you know, I know some of you guys are interested in this just to learn things. So if there's interest, let me know guys. Please comment below, you know, show me, show me, how, show me with your likes or whatever that you wanna see more of this and I'll make more videos on Wire EDM. I just don't want to make a whole bunch of them if they're going to be good for nobody. You know what I mean? If it doesn't help anybody, there's no point. Uh, again, thanks as always for watching, guys. Thanks for coming and hang out with me and uh, spend your time. If you want to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, guys. You take care.